this is a conversation with Ms. Pad Paja Ruparel. Uh, she is the co-founder of the Indian Angel Network, IAN. She is also the founding partner of the IAN Fund. Uh, you are uh, a real advocate and champion and a supporter of startups. You've actually spent considerable amount of time. You have created uh, you know, uh, many organizations to uh, support and help them. So you know, if you can just uh, share with us, uh, in the pandemic, uh, there were one set of startups that actually pivoted their businesses to address the COVID challenges. Uh, there were another set of uh, startups that have been, you know, uh, impacted differently. So what uh, would you like to share with us on what is the current state of the startup uh, system and, you know, uh, what are the different elements and types of startups uh, that are actually operating and uh, currently and where and what frame of business are they in? So at the outset, uh, uh, Mr. Chinoy, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's always a delight speaking with you. And uh, I must say that uh, Vicky's focus on the startup ecosystem and in startups is laudable. Uh, they, of course, have a committee focused on startups. Uh, which is uh, well chaired by uh, Ajay Chaudhary and I've been fortunate to be a co-chair of that. So honestly, first thing is your vision and your leadership on driving Piki into the startup ecosystem, I completely must appreciate. Uh, you know, you, you've uh, probably raised a very important point. Uh, the pandemic itself and is something that we in our lifetimes have never seen. It's a once in a century situation, almost. Uh, all of us keep reading about the Spanish flu, but this is almost as worse, more worse than that. It is, uh, we don't know what has hit us. The, the, and to add to it, uh, the IMF has, of course, declared a global recession, which has made things worse. So this, there could be a worse time for any business, large or small, to be standing at the end of the COVID tunnel. So the first thing that when it hit, uh, I had almost about three to 4,000 startups call me in the first 10 days of the lockdown. And each of them were actually struggling, just struggling to first figure out what hit them. Okay. What should they do? How should they handle things? And um, we landed up by giving them two or three uh, unwanted advice, perhaps, at that time. But hopefully, it helped them to stand. One was to keep remembering that cash is king. There were zero revenues coming in because of the lockdown. Uh, investments were not happening. Everything had come to a stall. So the first thing was, how do you conserve cash? And how do you question every single rupee that needed to be paid out and aggressively chase every rupee that could come? That was the first thing we said. And that was not as simple as I'm saying it because contracts, agreements, all of those had to change. So there was a huge impact. Second piece which they really, really grappled with, people right? There was no business. So how are companies going to maintain salaries and rents? Yet, you had to cut costs. You had cash is king. It was still ringing in their ears. So they had to grapple with literally choosing the talent that they wanted to retain and letting go of people, which wasn't easy. And we both know that they were very difficult time because the government had sent out some uh, very clear guidance. So I think the first month or so was, was terrible for the startups. They just didn't know what to do. But what also happened after that month was there were a lot of people who started changing their mindsets and saw the situation as an opportunity to see how they could 
not only keep standing to come out of the other other end of the covid tunnel well but more importantly is to actually build a business and that is where i think the entrepreneurial startup spirit of being able to leverage adversity into an opportunity became so so important i give you one example so that you get a sense we locked down on 25th of march the country locked down on the 24th of march we had this set of two entrepreneurs their collective um, experience was single digit they came up and they told us that they would actually like to build a ventilator which would be able to work for covid patients in 95 days they had produced designed they had uh, manufactured put the product together and ready to market in 95 days with all tests done be it the icmr test the nib test whatever the government's requirements were with public and private hospitals with patients live patients they were tested they are through today they have a huge order book of uh, ventilators to go out into the market and they have started on that they did not stop though on the development of their original product which was in the solar business that is now picking up but what is important to say that when challenges come we all talk about what changes we can do about the business what changes we can do about the product but i think the biggest thing that has happened with covid what is the change or the pivot we do in our minds because if that pivot in our minds does not happen there is only one result which is perish so it was a situation it is a situation where i think it is either pivot or perish so to me i think the covid situation overall is something it's a big lesson in life and it's 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 those who pick it up and run with it and face it and build on it that will survive that i think is something i'd like to leave as a as a message to everyone that be where you may be as startups there is always an opportunity so that is one part of course covid with its uh, situation and its focus it's got all of us to focus on fundamentals and basics i think there are companies which have done well they have done their years projections they have achieved in two months these are the companies which are on logistics or essentials or deliveries of essentials these have done well and it's natural and there's no reason not to do it but i think the most in interesting situations have been how do you turn it around how do you leverage and it wasn't easy we all know the, the lockdown wasn't easy at all so i think that is what has really uh, turned the indian entrepreneurial ecosystem around and people are coming back entrepreneurs and founders are looking for new opportunities and coming back and opportunities have changed clearly customer behavior has changed market has not gone away customer behavior has changed many of us have stopped looking at diamonds and are looking at more fundamental things it says it all right so uh, there is a there is a market there is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to build there is an ability and customers will need to buy nothing stops so i think that is the reality that uh, is there you know thank you for that uh, saying uh, pivot or perish uh, market has not changed customer behavior has uh, chase uh, every penny owed to you and uh, Uh, try to find ways to avoid people chasing you for that penny. Uh, I think uh, great uh, insights uh, from you. And now let's look at the other side. Behind most uh, startups are investors, right? And if you look at the uh, traction uh, data, the startup funding dropped by twenty nine percent in the first six months, right? Um, in addition to that, uh, what? investor behavior now because as 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 uh, startups are impacted you know investors are normally seen as one people who want to make money and then exit what should you know what 
investor behavior and what uh, uh, you know support to investors should consider for giving their investi companies uh, and organizations in this time uh, because you know uh, i think it makes uh, the the startup is as important as the investing company so what do you uh, think of this behavior and what could go happen ahead no i think uh, your comment ahead is a headline comment to say that startups are important i think startups are the job creators so you i completely endorse that so i think you know the business of startups is to build businesses right they have to do that and similarly the business of investors is to invest and make returns so they have to invest that's the reality they cannot stop investing because they cannot stop getting returns that's the kind of business right so what is important is what businesses or which kind of businesses or what are investors looking for that is what makes a difference right good companies and what are good companies i'll come to that are raising money i think one big thing that has happened with the pandemic and the macroeconomic situation i think cash is become even more valuable there is a liquidity crunch so companies which are going to have a solid foundation which means they are building a top line and a bottom line with there is a line of sight to profitability there is a line of sight to cash surplus so that the companies can grow organically those are the companies which will and are attracting investments i think the market share model where you keep investing money and the companies really don't make a profit i think both in india and globally uh, they have been given a vote which is not very exciting as we know so solid companies with good good uh, 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 profitability sites yes those are going to raise money which also means that there is a focus on unit economics what is your cost of customer acquisition how 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 you are efficient in your spend all of those become important the second thing that becomes very important is the entrepreneur's focus on the customer how well does he understand the customer the customer's needs the customer's behavior how is it changing and it's not easy i must say that in the same breath because we are in slightly unpredictable times but those are the entrepreneurs which are raising money and we are seeing that happen in fact at ien we have invested in about 12 to 15 companies in the last 4 5 months and five companies have raised their next round raising global money so the so action has not stopped but yes uh if you really ask me the first two months investors were also grappling to understand what has hit them and it took them time to understand the new normal as we are all calling but overall i think investments are happening the second piece which has changed to be honest is companies were raising money for a have to now raise money for a longer runway the next round is going to take much longer and i think this is something which is uh, a direct outcome of covid and uh, the lockdown and, and the recession so that is a big change that is happening uh, we worked with a number of banks which came up with debt products to help companies in the covid times but uh, i think i think those were useful to some and not so useful to many but that is a first step forward which i have seen in many years that has come from the government and, and the bankers so i think that is something which has happened but overall the real help that startups need is not only money to be honest is the hand holding the operational guidance how to handle things how do you handle teams how do you reduce salaries and yet keep uh, retain people how do you create new products how do you access markets by sitting at home these are all things that i think startups need and to me that value add is much more important because which company would like to keep diluting if they can actually leverage all of this kind of value add and grow their companies then they will 
run their companies on their own revenues. So I think those are the things that I've seen that have worked. Again, uh, a lot of uh, insights uh, there. Not only cash is uh, king, but cash is also seeking value. Uh, you focus on unit uh, acquisition, customer uh, unique economic, economics, customer acquisition, and controlling spends. And I think investors are uh, still ready to invest. Uh, the banking has also started some options. But on the positive side, right? And you talked about it, and I just want to expand that a bit further. There has been a growth in some phenomenal sectors: healthcare, online gaming, ed tech, digital payments. You know, now from an investor's lens, uh, you know, you think that these sectors will remain high priority in the coming months, and is there more opportunity for startups to come in, or this is getting overcrowded? No, no, no. I, I, I completely endorse what you're saying. I mean, uh, digitization, going digital, is not going away. I mean, 2016. What did the government try? The government tried demonet through demonetization, tried to take Indian consumer online. But you know, Indians went back to cash. It wasn't that piece did not succeed. But in 2020, with COVID, the big success has been that we have gone digital. It is a consumer-led movement. It is a consumer-led demand that we have got digital. And the entire country is now moving towards a digital economy, which by 2023 is expected to be a trillion dollars. So with that kind of a market size, there is no way that we are not going to go digital. We are going to keep moving on it, number one. Number two, it's created a huge market there. So entrepreneurs are going to come and innovate and there are going to be new businesses and the opportunities are among us. I mean, when we go digital, we're not talking only about fintech or paytech, right? Everything is going digital. How are you? We, have, we are a country of 29 languages and hundreds of vernaculars. How are we going to even access that digital? It's not going to be just English. Think of the complexity. Think of the opportunities. So... This is this is a humongous I think. I mean, think about AGM, Reliance's AGM. Never before have two majors like Facebook and Google come and invested in Geo, which is primarily India's information highway, technology highway. Why? Because of the market size, because of the opportunity here and the depth that is yet left unpenetrated. So I think this is a huge opportunity. That's one part on going digital. On your second question on biotech and healthcare, we have been hit by a pandemic. We are humans at the end of the day. So we will take absolute need of the hour for us has become health. If we don't survive as humans, we are not going to be able to do anything else. Right? And the cap. COVID-19 has thrown up a fact that we were unprepared in many ways, not only in our healthcare infrastructure, not only in our healthcare services, not only in terms of what kind of medicines, but we are unclear on even vaccines as a globally mankind. And therefore, that is the need. The need today is not on fancy clothes and jewelry. The need is to survive. And how do you have a healthy life going forward? So it's very natural. The country did, did not have a focus on biotech before COVID-19 or health, care, health tech, the kind it should have had. It's gone three times. We were getting about um, 20 to 21 percent of our 10,000 to 12,000 deal flow that we get per annum was in health tech. Today that is touching almost 40 to 50 percent. It's gone up three times in three months. No other sector has seen this. So clearly there is a need. Clearly there's a problems to be solved. And therefore there is going to be innovations and problem solvers. I mean, that, that's, that's fantastic. So your big takeaways, healthcare has actually grown three times uh, in terms of the funding requests. I hope it's being matched equally by the funding grants uh, there. Uh, the second thing is very interesting that uh, digital is big and anything when you use to digitize, whether it's uh, gaming, 
edtech or payments or even uh, telemedicine or, or digital health uh, will still remain a high priority in going front and i think the biggest statement that you made is that there's unlimited uh, potential going forward and you know coming back to where we began you know we talked about this large number of uh, startups who were you know uh, not doing that well who needed some sust- uh, some sustenance going forward so what uh, support do you think uh, that the startups uh, need uh, you know you talked about mentoring and other things but in terms of from the government uh, from private sector and from the investor community are there new products that could be designed for them what would you advocate going forward no i think it's a it's a very good question because um it's time to sort of institutionalize some sort of a support i completely agree with you so what has shown up is that during these this last 3 to 4 months uh several organizations which we had not thought about earlier have stepped up i mean the number of covid related grants that uh private sector has come up with our phenomena we've got uh, different large companies from different sectors who have uh, thrown up grants and they have deployed them we have the vc community which put together a fund to support startups which is grant which was the act grant which is also something that a industry came together and put that together number 3 is you know picky itself has so many initiatives if you look at uh, the millennium alliance if you look at iigp all of these have been established much before the covid so you know that vision and that far sightedness has started much earlier that startups of every nature will need help will need to be supported and it needs to be supported financially as well so these are things that have come the government itself has supported in different ways it has again i'm going back to my word of cash is king that it has helped in different ways apart from the msme package that it has come up with it has done my, small things which have had a big impact like acceleration of refunds of tds and gst right reduction giving giving companies a, a leeway to do their filings later they are also saying please file your tax you please uh, deposit your taxes later these are important because cash flows are stressed so the government has done a combination of giving direct packages or subsidies and i shouldn't use the word subsidies i should use uh, financial support and non financial support by just accelerating refunds making sure that companies are able to first maintain their clientele before they pay taxes these are good steps to take going forward i think there are opportunities to really now bring all of these together unlock a lot of the industry and private and domestic money both government and otherwise and create a a kind of a fund or a vehicle through which startups and msmes can both leverage and grow their businesses the problem is that young companies will need support for a much longer time and what is most important in my view personal view is it's not only money but the quality of money that makes a lot of difference so putting money is easy but leveraging that money helping the startup to grow and use that money well is very important so the right mentors right quality investors right networks and i think fiki has led the way there it's got it's brought its global networks together in many ways apart from its national network to help companies i think it's an ecosystem that needs to be built out so i think it's that whole piece and not in one isolation of having money there i think it's money that network and that ecosystem that is important thank you very much uh, for that uh, you know uh, the overview of what has happened here so one very important thing coming out of your remarks is that the startups are eligible because their investment is less than the limit and their and 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 their turnover is less than 100 crores uh, they can actually access the msme uh, loan uh, uh, system if they meet the criteria i think that's a very important uh, thing for 
we at least the startups to know and fiki can help their being the bridge yeah uh, okay and uh, i think in the second uh, point that you actually made is very interesting is that we need good quality money and uh, a lot of uh, industry people in traditional industries uh, have the have money and also have the ability of people to be mentors so they have the ability to provide good quality money uh, to the startup ecosystem and they should look at it as a great opportunity uh, going forward so uh, you know if if you are an industry person listening to this you have this opportunity and of course you can always connect into iain or fiki uh, to take uh, that forward but you know finally uh, you know what would your advice uh, be to a startup and how would they distinguish good quality money from money and what should they look for uh, when they are one if they have a choice between funding uh, two sets of funds uh, what should they look for in a fund before finally uh, deciding you know when investors invest in entrepreneurs what do we do we look at the background of the company uh, of the entrepreneurs what have they done where have they worked what kind of experience have they gathered i honestly say this and i say this to every entrepreneur please check us out where what have we done talk to our portfolio companies talk to our investors look at their backgrounds and you will figure it out there is no tick box there is no format the only way to assess people is to look at people thank you uh, thank you so much uh... but the people make startups and people need to look at people who can support them and that will actually create uh, you know realize the scaling up and the beginning of the second innings of a startup uh, era uh, post covid uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today thank you for sharing your insights and i'm sure everybody listening both investors and potential startups uh, and the existing startups have taken a lot away from today's conversation thank you and keep safe and keep well thank you